In this video, six developers are challenged to make the best possible video game in three weeks for a prize pool of $3,000. Sadly, there could only be one winner, so we'll be up to these four judges to discuss. I couldn't put it down. Dissect. Feels like there's quite a bit of potential. Analyze. It's the first one that I started playing, and even after finishing all the games, like, I came back to do like another run. <laughs> and ultimately decide which two devs to brutally eliminate each and every week. This is week one, the quarterfinals. Each dev will have to base their game on a secret theme. The theme for this week is Strange Machines. Introducing the six challengers. Hello guys, Vitaly here. Thanks. Come on, guys. I think I feel all right. I think I've, I've sussed out the competition. I think there is definitely some competitors, some other people I know nothing about. So I did try to look into the competition a little bit. I do know a few of them. So I know uh, Rug, Ollie, and Wishbone to varying degrees. I haven't taken a look at the competition just yet, but I know a few of them and I know it's going to be quite hard, honestly. When I win, I'll finally be out of debt and I'll be able to afford toilet paper. But until then, I'm going to be using my competition to wipe my ass. No, I'm not talking about you mashup games. I don't even consider you competition. Not after all that trash talk you've been giving me on that Discord server. I'm mostly worried about the fluffy potato, because if you've seen the g like, it's kind of nutty. Yeah, so thanks Black Home Productions for the invite. Strange Machines, what an interesting theme. Uh, I think I can do something with that. Machines plural is what throws me off a bit, so hopefully I'll be able to find a way around that or work it into my game. The theme is conventionally a good um, game gym theme for the most part, although it doesn't really work well with me because I usually tend to do more nature-oriented games. Wishbone is doing a lot, of, a lot of this, a lot of trash talk. I think probably he's going to be the first to go. Is compensated. I'll have to go with Duo just because I couldn't find anything about him online. It's all fun and games at the end. I'm gonna have fun regardless, but man, do I wanna win. But now let's get these devs cooking. Six are going to go in, only four will remain at the end. But first, quick heads up we've just launched our brand new game making course in collaboration with successful indie game developer Thomas Brush, and the course is called Game Dev Hero. It's absolutely enormous and filled with every bit of info you need to turn your passion for game creation into a profitable career. You'll not only learn how to make game art, code, design fun games, but also how to sell them, build audience, and ultimately make money from your creations. Basically living the indie game dev dream in a couple of months if you start now and give it your all. The course is only available for one month and there's barely 300 spots available, which means now is the time to leap headfirst into your game making dreams. Don't wait for another tomorrow, guys. If you're really serious about becoming a game creator, this is the time, this is the moment. Oh, and guys, we're offering a $100 discount for the first 50 students who sign up today, as well as four special mastermind meetings with Thomas Brush and ourselves. So guys, don't wait for another tomorrow. Sign up today with the link in the description. But more on that later, now let's get cracking with developer number one, Wishbone Games. Before the theme came out, I was already busy training my game dev skills. So when the time came, I was ready as ever. I want to make something horror themed. So my goal here is to give the judges something completely different to the other contestants because I already guarantee there's going to be a factory management game or something and that's just not memorable. So I'm gonna fill them with a sense of dread and terror instead, because trauma never leaves you, perfect for making lasting memories. My idea is that there's gonna be a heart which is part machine and part flesh, and it's gonna be providing you with blood, but where does the blood come from? Well, I'm glad you asked. You're gonna have to source it yourself, bring it back to the heart, and throw whatever abomination you found into its horrifying blender. I'm giving you a shotgun which has to feel very powerful, and I love how Amnesia the Bunker does it, so I added some earring and some I also wanted to make each shot count, so I designed the double barrel shotgun, but the twist is, it only has one barrel. This is all set inside a nuclear fallout zone, where the wildlife is disgustingly mutated. In order to find vermin, you use your Geiger counter, which will start clicking if a radioactive creature is nearby. I just love how this thing sounds. Since everything is mutated and it goes into your heart, each vermin will give you a mutation, and this has the added effect of your character needing to have radiation in their blood to survive. When you're carrying something back to the heart, I made the creature still be kicking, fighting for its life, which is made even more disturbing when you have to shred it alive into a million different pieces to harvest its blood, as the heart does not accept corpses. 
Sound design is the most important thing in a horror game in my opinion, so here's what I have now. I really want to go into the story of this game, but I don't have time right now, so you're gonna have to cross your fingers and toes and hope that I make it to the next round. Oh, I also made this goofy ass deer, and next week I'll add some predators that will circle you when you're carrying vermin home, so you'll have to either scare them off with your shotgun or try to outrun them. At this point, I was running out of time, so I'll put aside all the rest of my ideas for next week. For the first round of eliminations, I'm pretty confident that I'll survive because I hope the judges will see that this is a very small portion of what I have planned. I also hope to beat mashup games. Let me introduce you to this little guy. They're a walking, talking USB, which we all know stands for Us Be Winning. The character came about some time ago when I had the idea of a character that could plug themselves into machines and then take them over. And after my idea of freaking people out in the 1800s by taking photos with a modern everyday camera kind of quickly fell apart, I thought it fitting to give this idea a go, considering the theme. The idea I had in mind was a racing game, where you race against others through an obstacle course and you can plug yourself into machines to give you new types of movement and abilities. But after development, I realised that was a much more impressive and interesting way to go. The goal of the game is to make your way through puzzle rooms, with props and other things at your disposal. And the novelty of this little USB is that it can plug them into body parts and unlock new abilities. Tired of having to walk everywhere? Plug into some wheels and off you go! Wanna jump higher? Plug yourself into a pogo stick and now you can! Feel like you're drowning in the burden and pressure to succeed and progress and yet you feel like you're going nowhere in life? Well plug yourself into this fan and you can just fly away from your problems. The game is like a fun little escape room, a mixture between Portal and Kirby, and all the charm I could muster. I mean, look at this little dude. You can't tell him we're going to be eliminated. I'll break his heart. And it's not only legs you can change either. Sling on some boxing gloves, destroy crates, or knock balls around. Strap on a beating stick, wait, hang on, strap on some beating sticks and flail your arms about to knock all those pesky boxes away. And while you're at it, why not combine them? Stick yourself onto some legs with some arms equipped, and look, you've got yourself the next WA champion. There are so many possibilities to what can be achieved here, and if you vote me into office, I will- wait, no, that's wrong. If I get through to the next round, I will be exploring further what we can do with this. New body parts and flashing out the current ones, new and bigger levels. Might even give him a little hat. Imagine exploring bigger rooms where you can find context clues to an overarching story. Imagine enemies in those rooms that you have to defeat in order to get through. Imagine... Imagine... Vote Mashup Games 2024 so I decided to get a bit out of my comfort zone to make this challenge way more interesting and I made a genre that I've never done before in my entire life where you gotta build machines around the core which you need to defend. This is gonna be called the strange machine. Your mission is to lead your nanobots army to protect this strange machine in the enemy's home planet while it initializes and boots up. You'll also need to fight waves of enemies with intention of destroying the strange machine and your units so they can save their planet. In the end, it is a resource management game similar to StarCraft or Class of Clans for instance, but sped up so the match is around 10 minutes. It is pretty cool because I managed to get a bunch of buildings in, like the training zones, some factories that craft materials and resources for you that you gotta pick up manually and even mines and then I got to make a lot of different units that you can train like the melee, the explosives, snipers, bullet hell units and more and same applies for the enemies. Moreover, you can sort of gamble your resources in the strange machine in exchange for juicy rewards and perks while you keep upgrading to higher levels to enable the ability of building more in different constructions. Also, I think the defeat in big tree animations are pretty cool by the way. So overall, I think I did a great job on this, taking into account that it is a completely unexplored genre for me and that I could only work on it for a very short period of time. So in case of not getting eliminated on this round, I'm definitely going to be improving the graphics a lot because I am very perfectionist and I was not too happy about the current look of the game, so yeah, that's probably going to be my first thing to do. 
I will also add more enemies, units, buildings and even boss battles so I truly think there is a lot of use yet to come for this game in this challenge. Hello everyone, I'm Rugbug. The theme Strange Machines sparked a horror game idea where you would be hunted down by a half-human, half-car creature. It would be set in a junkyard and you had to collect scrap to repair your car in order to escape. I started work by building out the level generator. It worked by loading an image and instantiating these junk tiles I made wherever there was a black pixel. Next I started work on the design for the enemy. I got this realistic human teeth model and this car and basically spent a few hours mushing them together. Rigging and weight painting was the most time consuming part but it was worth it in the end. I needed to depict the way you ended up in the junkyard and I decided that the main menu would be a perfect place to do that. The idea was you got into a car crash on a mountaintop highway and swerved off the cliff into a junkyard. It explained how your car got busted up, and also why you ended up here. Next I worked on the car AI, which was by far the most time consuming part of this entire game. It took a lot of tweaking to get perfect, but after adding sound effects, it started to actually feel like a horror game. Oh my god. Run, 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 no, 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 no. The environment was getting a bit stale, so I added a lot of decorations and variety to help bring it to life. Then, I worked on the final, main mechanic of the game, the parts required to repair your car. When you pick up a tire, your speed slows down and it's easier for the monster to catch you, so you have to be strategic about when you pick up and drop the items. And if you mess up, well... Once you collect 4 tires for your car, you can drive away and finally be safe. Or are you? If I move on to week 2, I plan to make a second level, set in a logging operation in the forest. There will be a new crane enemy that attacks you from above, and you'll have to utilize new mechanics to finally escape the grotesque monsters. And that's it for my game, Killer Junkyard. I think I have an idea. I think I'm gonna do parody on Downwell, but the name itself of the game is going to be... So here we have Empty Project, and I'm just gonna drag the logo, and call it a day for today. Hello people, this is Vitaly's dad. Vitaly got sick, so I'm gonna continue his work. My son has to win this competition. Oh, I just opened Unity Project. How disappointed I am. I refuse to use Unity Engine, so I'm gonna design this game on paper. I will send this game by mail. And we better win the first round. And the game is gonna to be very good. It's a futuristic toilet. That's a game you want to play. I know it. You all have phones, right? Uh, what a dream. Oh. Alright, so I was thinking of making 50 shades of my machine kind of game. Basically, you have this machine and you know, you can torture a guy. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So then I added guy and the machine. Kind of gross. Uh, scary I'm gonna lose my sanity you know if i'm gonna continue this project so i hope that uh, i lose so i get control to the hands and i think it's kind of funny the idea that i had is that uh, you would have points and then you need to collect them uh, moving the machine to some location and get points <laughs> Even with my busy week, I was able to put in 12 hours and finish the prototype for Yon Hawk. So here it is. The top-down shooter where strange machines are fighting you with the rules of Conway's game of life. I prefer to make games involving nature, so I mixed machines and nature to arrive at the organic yet mechanical feel of Conway's game of life. The enemies spawn in waves and the temporary scoring system is just about how many waves you survive and how many machines you directly destroy. If you're not careful about which enemies you destroy, you may accidentally set off a chain reaction that leads to an explosion of more enemies that gets you killed. So far I've got the core enemy and combat mechanics in, which has turned out quite fun already in my opinion. I have a bunch of ideas to make the progression system more interesting and turn the game into a roguelike. So I'm hoping I can stay in for this round and push this idea to the next level. I've still got a lot of polishing to do. Now this was some incredible work from the six devs, which makes coming up to a decision on which two creators to eliminate even harder than expected. The judges now sit down for their first meeting. Uh, what really impressed me was the plus 
of the potatoes game like it was very short there was not a lot of content yet but everything it, it didn't have much but it felt extremely polished so that's right. probably one of my favorites the other one that i liked the most was uh, Bridgebone game uh, I'm a huge fan of horror games, to be honest, <laughs> and uh, I really like what you did with the atmosphere. Out of all the games, I feel like there were three that felt really good to play, and then there were two that I had a bit more of a buggy experience with, where I had to exit out of the game and restart it, or I got into like a soft lock state. Uh, since we had one contestant not submit a build, yeah. and we're looking to make one more contestant, my vote is that it should be uh, a duo's game that should be Ah, okay, interesting. I think that uh, the Killer Junkyard was quite an interesting idea. Uh, the atmosphere was really great. Uh, I, I like the sound design, but I don't really know how can the game uh, like be expanded upon. Mm, that's what Liam was saying as well. Yeah. He was saying the same thing. That was what I was saying also because I really like the monster, the car monster. The creature design yeah. is fantastic. The way yeah. it's animated and stuff. The sound design, as you said, but originality wise it's basically slender it's very difficult right because like we're not only yeah. rating the games on based on how they are now but also on the potential they have and the, yeah. what's hard with eliminating Jules game is that it feels like there's quite a bit of potential one of the other games that we were <laughs> hesitating on, on eliminating alongside uh, Vitaly is um it, it was Ollie's game so we were not sure because Ollie's game is really cool personally I'm not an enormous fan of puzzle games but then I was playing his game and really felt thematically solid like it really was like strange machines it felt solid on that point so I don't know what you guys think of all these creation for now I really like the approach that you can find like different equipment that you can just uh, hop into uh, it felt really clanky at times with some of the attachments uh, all these game was one of the ones where I had to restart the game because I, I uh, glitched out of the level and couldn't reset. Nah, same, same. So there is a world where it's Ollie's game <laughs> that gets eliminated, not Jules or, or Rugs game. Ah, man, it's, it's really um, it's tough. It's a tough decision. Vitaly, we're all agreeing he's gonna have to be eliminated. There was yeah. no game, so... There was no game, there was no game, and um, I, I think he put in the least time and the least effort on that project. And I'm almost glad he did, because that uh, alleviates a little bit of the, 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 the decision-making here. We only need to really think of one amongst the five others. How are the nerves? I'm actually very nervous because I'm in crippling debt, so I kind of need the money. <laughs> but I'm not sure I like this crotch shot from Wishbone. <laughs> <laughs> Announce the first game uh, that, that moves on to, to round two. So the first one is... Drum roll. <laughs> Wishbone. Yes! Okay, yes! <laughs> oh my god. Thank you, thank you. You guys did not make our job easy. This was not an easy decision to come to, but... The second contestant that will make it to the next round is Fluffy Potato. Yeah. <laughs> so the third developer that moves on is Rug. So we've got uh, Joe, Ollie, and Vitaly. They're left. Two of you are going to get eliminated, so only one uh, can pass. The person that's going to pass and that's going to be able to expand his game for another week is... Ollie. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> My heart was racing for a moment. <laughs> I'd like to give a round of applause for the, the people you got eliminated today. Yeah. Well done, guys. Now things are going to get even spicier. It's time for week two, the semi-finals. Here we are. Round two. Didn't think I'd be here, did you? I believe that Rug is the most likely to be out next round, because let's be real, there can only be one horror game, and I want this win more than anyone here. I'm serious, nothing is stopping me. I'm most afraid of Wishbone, because I think he has a very similar horror game style to me, so it's a lot more even ground to compete on. I mean, it's not really a game yet, it's more like an atmospheric walking simulator with some goats you can shoot, but we'll see, I guess. Who has the highest chance of being eliminated next? I'm gonna have to go with Ollie. It just seems like he has the least progress so far and he may have some catching up to do. Wishbone surprisingly has made something that looks cool. I seem to have this friendly competition with Wishbone. He thinks I can't make games. 
probably right to some extent. Knowing this channel, they're going to ask us to turn our ideas into a top-down tower defense game, which I'm really not looking forward to, especially because Mashup has plenty of experience doing that. So during week two, while the developers were busy grinding towards that Sunday deadline, the judges threw them a nasty twist. They would have to spin Blackthorn Prod's Wheel of Fortune. Whatever they landed on would be a second theme they had to incorporate into their project. I actually got centipedes. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> okay. Pick your poison. Metamorphosis? Alright. Okay, so here's what Ollie, Rug, the Fluffy Potato, and Wishbone have done for week number two, starting with Wishbone. Welcome to the week where I didn't sleep. No, not because the idea of losing to Mashup keeps me up at night or anything, um, but because I was working non-stop on adding cool new things. As I said last week, my first order of business was to add these hyenas, who will try to take your injured animal from you. Once this guy notices you, it'll begin to follow you at a distance, because it knows that you're basically an all-you-can-eat deer buffet. But just like any scavenger, it's terrified of you, so if you walk towards it, it's gonna run away. Once you shoot a deer, the hyena will start walking towards it, so you might be thinking, oh, okay, that's fine, I'm just gonna pick up the deer. Nope, f you. He'll knock you to the ground and take that thing right off your shoulder while your character is still trying to remember what planet he's on. But right now, the game is, go get deer, bring it back. Oh boy, I wonder what's next. That's right, go get deer and bring it back. So to expand on the story and also make the gameplay more fun, I made a demand system for the heart which will crave certain vermin. You must pray to the heart in order to find out what it craves. But Wishbone, can't I just give it the wrong thing? Nope, you just pissed off the gods. It's now raining. And probably some other cooler stuff next week. The game is still too safe, and I've always wanted to add a Wendigo to a game, so I decided to start modeling one. I animated and textured it, and it's absolutely terrifying. This thing is attracted to gunshots, which means you better be ready to get the hell out of the area once you shot something. This is also around when the twist dropped, and here's how that went. I'm so happy with this because I already know exactly what I want to do with it. So last week, I talked about mutations that you gain, which will slowly and unbeknownst to the player be morphing you into a mutated beast throughout the game. This progression system is inspired by Metroidvania games. There's going to be obstacles that you cannot overcome until you get the relevant mutation. For example, there's a place called the Deep Forest, which is blocked off by a wooden fence that you definitely cannot climb over. But lucky for you, the deer gives you a mutation to jump, which lets you in. But wait! You can't see anything because the forest is, a uh, uh, deep. Well, that's why the hyena has glowing eyes. I have huge plans for this deep forest, so I'm definitely gonna need week three to show it off to all you guys. Nudge nudge, judges, hello. You might notice that I changed the colors of the game because instead of a wasteland, I want to make this forest feel hauntingly beautiful, just like the Wendigo. I've always loved how terrifyingly gorgeous the sound of elk is. That literally gave me goosebumps. You know the way I said the Wendigo is attracted to the gunshots? Well, there are doors in the way which you can only break with your shotgun. There are also traps which you have to disarm, once again, using your shotgun. So this thing is always going to be a few steps behind you. And finally, in order to teach all of these new things, I made an intro sequence where the nuclear siren in the area goes off because the Wendigo is nearby, which you'll have to turn off, and I really love how this turned out. Then, I lost a bit of progress due to a corrupt file, it broke all of the AI, and I had to work 13 hours today to make up for it. But it's fine, it's only 4am. Hello there USB, how are you doing today? Oh, you've changed your look, how nice. Oh, you want to show me something? Ooh, that looks like a fun toy. What, where are you aiming that? Hello, it's me again. USB has a few fun toys to show off. You've just been acquainted with the cannon arms, which you can either press to fire a cannonball or hold to fire an extra powerful one. Also a new power-up is the magnet arms. These can be used to pick up metallic boxes and carry them around. Or you can magnetise yourself to big metal walls. I've added a few polishing touches to places too. The player has a shadow underneath them which makes doing jumps like these actually possible. And I've made cords that run from switches to the things they operate. The camera is much better framing the level now. And we even got some sound effects in. The UI buttons are more dynamic in each level, where the buttons for a plugin pop up when you get on them. I even got a main menu, though I haven't actually had time to get a name for the game yet. You know what? Get me into the next round, I'll not just give you a name, I'll give you a name and a fancy logo. Now this would have been the point where I focused on making the bigger levels that I wanted to, 
but then I got thrown a massive curveball. Pick your poison. Oh no. <sighs> How am I going to do that? But I'm not going to let that disadvantage me, no. So let me show you how I incorporated Pick Your Poison into my puzzle game. Between each room, you enter the elevator. You get in, doors close, and you move up. When the elevator comes to a stop, you get... Oh, someone's waiting for you. They're telling you that there's currently a problem with not just one, but both versions of the room? Now you have to make a choice. Do you take the room with hazardous sludge everywhere, or the one with the faulty platforms? Do you take the room where boxes take twice as many hits to destroy, or the one where the plugins automatically plug you out every 20 seconds? These rooms are practically the same, but they offer a different take on the puzzle challenge. And if anything, I'm very proud of this elevator sequence. What would I do if I get into the final round? Well, most of what I promised last time. More levels, more fleshed out on the plugins, maybe even a couple more plugins. And this time, I will actually give the USB a hat. You know what? Scratch that. I'll give the USB and the robot a hat. And I'll also add new types of variations to the levels. I have a mix of challenging ideas and some fun ones. Imagine the wonder seeds from Mario Wonder put that into this. So you know what to do. Get me through to the finals. For this week, I carried out my plan of adding the new crane enemy on the new logging level. I spent the first few days modeling, texturing, and rigging the crane, and setting up the new level. Then the midweek twist happened. I was worried about this because I had a really tight schedule and didn't know if I could add any extra features to the game. Metamorphosis? Alright. After brainstorming for a while, I settled on the idea that the level would be metamorphosizing. Yeah. Originally, I had planned for the crane to search around the map and attack you, but with the new theme, I decided to add a new behavior to it. I added these shipping containers that the crane can pick up and move around the map. With the map constantly changing, it's easier to get disoriented or have your path cut off, so you need to be alert and agile. And of course, you don't want to stand directly under them. This also created some interesting interactions between the crane and the car. No bro, he's letting the car out! This asshole! Next, I worked on the crane's other behavior. It would go to a random spot on the map and look for the player. If you happen to walk into its spotlight, it would start following you, and then attack you. And if you don't dodge in time... I had to pick a base for the bottom of the crane, but I didn't want to do the traditional treads, so I opted for a fleshy mass of pulsating meat. It's gross and it's dripping blood everywhere, and I like it. The plot that connects this level to the previous level is that you're driving away from the junkyard and the enemy car follows you. You run out of fuel so you pull into the worksite to try and find some gas. Unfortunately though, I didn't have enough time to make that cutscene. If you like what you see, then go wishlist Killer Junkyard on Steam. Whether or not I proceed to the next round, I'm going to make it into a full game. But crossing my fingers I do make it into the next round, I'm going to add a final boss fight against this massive excavator. Hey. It seems I survived the first round. I was given the additional theme centipedes. It naturally makes sense for the centipedes to be enemies, but they don't fit nicely into the Conway's Game of Life rules. But hey, bullets are a hazard that disregard the rules. So I decided to add centipedes as a weapon of a machine. In this case, I made a suspicious egg, which when destroyed spawns a centipede mech that will chase you. This adds a lot more depth to target selection as blindly destroying eggs early on in a wave can lead to quite a mess of centipedes. This was also my first time rigging and animating something like this, and since I'm doing it in Pygame, I had to write that system from scratch. However, my biggest change was to move the emphasis more towards the waves and add a shop where you can buy permanent upgrades with scrap you collect from destroying machines. I could add things like weapons or skills here in the future. Overall, I added more polish and refined the difficulty progression. You won't run into centipedes on the first wave. I may have slipped by without any audio before, but I've added some simple sound effects this time around. If I can make it to the next round, I have plans for boss waves, music, mid-wave abilities, map changes, more shop items, mid-wave events with alternate cellular automata rules, and of course, more polish. Also, I might go ahead and start heading towards a Steam release if I make it through this round here. I see a lot of potential in this concept. 
the semi-finals are up and it's now time for the judges yet again to come to a very painful decision. So they sat down, round table discussion is in order. I really love the Fluffy Potatoes yeah. top-down shooter game. It's incredible, it's really juicy. Fluffy Potatoes game, I couldn't put it down. It's actually very polished, it's very juicy, it has responsive controls and there's even like a complete polished game loop that you can actually yeah. keep on playing. There, there was some stuff that I wanted, that I desired out of that too, mostly level variety. Like I wanted like maybe some walls or water that you had to dodge around, you know, or like some some sort of way to mix up, you know, just being in a box. It's the same that the visuals of the Fluffy Potatoes game were and changing like if you created two or three different maps it's a little bit redundant the same trees the same green the mashup games is, is still it, it still feels quite clunky if you compare it to the last time um, there yeah. were still some issues with it but the, the idea is very original I, I'm not sure if I even seen like a platformer where you can play as a USB stick and just basically combine with stuff to improve your powers and stuff like that original. his strong points for his game are the character designs I think as well as like the, yeah. the modular gameplay the elevator scene with like the little elevator attendant that comes and gives you the choice you know it's like super cute and very charming but I think for me I was just hoping that from the previous week he would integrate a little more polish it was the only game that I played through that had numerous bug interactions yeah, I found it quite difficult as well to do some platforming stuff and uh, I even play platforming games as well so one thing I really appreciated though is how he added shadows into this iteration of the game because it yeah. made the jumping a lot easier Rogue's game is also very polished. It was actually very fun to play as well. Uh, I think maybe he even balanced it out a, a little bit because I actually managed to beat it this time. Yeah, same. I um, beat the first level anyway. I didn't, I yeah. didn't uh, complete the second chapter, but I was able to win. Yeah. I was a little disappointed that the car was still in the second chapter because I wanted it to be like something a little different where it was like more crane centric. The biggest drawback was I guess the uniqueness of the idea because it felt like your stereotypical horror game where you basically get chased around by some kind of a monster mm. and you just have to bring stuff from me to be basically and with the addition of the crane i feel like it made the gameplay more vertical like i felt more like a mouse in a in a maze yeah. being trapped it's like a pretty unique experience interesting and uh, interesting. which bones it was actually quite difficult to start playing i started playing it without watching the video first so i found it quite confusing i took like i don't know like 10 15 minutes of just walking around mindlessly and then i decided to try watching the video and it seems that i had to go way to the other direction to see the like the enemies and the monsters and everything so it's not it wasn't really intuitive from the game design perspective wishbone's game was one of my favorites just because of how um, incredible the atmosphere was so when i saw that wendigo yeah. uh, in the distance you know in that in the foggy mist with its cool antlers and stuff i was hooked i was really like oh this is uh, a really interesting world i understand that the yeah. gameplay wise it probably is currently the weakest game i feel the world just the world in itself is super original i had the same experience where it was difficult for me to play through it as he's working on the game it's expanding and getting more confusing about where key points of interest are well i don't know though because it's a horror game and i feel like not knowing exactly where to go is part of like exploring and being scared about like where you are i don't know i do not doubt there will be some disquiets in the comments over our decisions so we played all of your games really impressive work once again I know that as a viewer, if I saw like two of these games go away, I would be really almost pissed, you know, because frankly, <laughs> they're all amazing. I'd be like, I wish I could see what's going to happen next. With that said, we had to eliminate two of you. Uh, we had a long, long call with the judges, very long, very heated debates. So I think it's time to, to, to announce who is the first finalist. It's super well polished. It's very fun to play. And it is... Fluffy Potato. Thank you. Fluffy <laughs> Potato is the first final. Congrats. Congrats, man. Good job, man. Fantastic. <clears throat> All right, well, I think we're going to stop the suspense here. Liam, I'm going to let you announce in uh, five seconds. So, the winner is... Wishbones. Oh! Oh, my God. Well, Thank you so much. Thank you so... Oh, my heart almost stopped. You almost killed Wishbone Games, guys. Oh my god. The little puzzle game Ollie concocted had so much potential, it was so hard to see that go away. And it just breaks my heart to see Rug go away. It really breaks my heart. You're always left thinking, you know, what if an extra week would have like completely transformed and made it much better? Everybody yes. wish list Rug's game. It will be in the description. Ollie, if ever you decide to put your game on Steam, let us know as well. I know I've been talking about Ollie a lot recently in this challenge. Um I finally beat him. No me, hard feelings. It. If I win, I'm gonna pay for your games placement on Steam, 
And I'm going to give oh, you $100. Man. Don't do that. It's too kind of you. I will. I will. Now I actually have to release it. <laughs> There's too much pressure. Oh, okay. So, Ollie, would you consider yourself a, a Wishbone fan now? Or are you rooting for Fluffy Potato in the finals? That's a Wishbone acquaintance. I'll take Honestly, it. two really <laughs> strong developers here. Like, their games, even from the first week, were really impressive. Definitely, I think at the end of the first week, my confidence was kind of like here. And then as soon as I saw the videos, it was just down here. I just want to say congratulations to Wishbone and to Fluffy Potato. Both made great games. Thank you. Can't wait to see who wins. All right, it's the moment we've all been waiting for. The finals are finally on, right? And $3,000 are on the line. So I'm super excited to see what Wishbone and Fluffy Potato are gonna come up with. One more week to give these games everything they've got. And the judges threw them a last little twist to spice things up even further. Each finalist would give a one word of the theme to the other opponent that they would have to incorporate in their final game. So I, I guess I'll go first and tell you what yours is. Okay. So, it's rainbows. Okay. Immediately thinking, how am I going to turn my terrifying horror game into a beautiful fairy tale? <laughs> What'd you give me? It better not be hockey or horror. So I did something that wouldn't affect the actual game. Like, you wouldn't have to go in and change everything. Homework. Okay. <laughs> so one more week of development later, here are the chill wars for both games. It's almost over, right? Why will I be free? Answer me, Father. Father, why did you make me do it? This is because of that thing. I sacrificed so much for you. isn't the only one that starves. They're all contaminated, mutated, beyond recognition. Even the forest, it feeds in its own way. I feel myself changing. Father, please set me free. I'll do what you want. I'll do everything. I pray for your blessing to help keep that thing away. I see it every night in my dreams. So, so vivid. But you always bring me back. Why, Father? Please, please let me die. the atmosphere one atmosphere look at these woods i just love all the trees that you know they feed up they're massive they're like endless trees oh okay so i think these yellow mushrooms are leading me towards the destination where i need to go god, oh god. terrifying beautifully done yeah, beautifully yeah. executed just, here i think i just need to search for the deer now before it was it had something to do with this geiger but i'm not exactly sure how to even use it to be honest wishbone did a great job of 
identifying that part of what makes like a, a walking simulator like this interesting is having points of interest and um, putting those along the path that he knows the player will go down. Dad, what's that? Look, there's a dead deer over there and the forest is absorbing its pain right now. It kind of looks like a rainbow, right dad? I think you're in the river right now. The heart's appetite grows. Bear eats you dead. I didn't see any bear. So, yeah, I didn't see any bear. That's wow. a bit frustrating. Okay. Okay, your knock. Okay, nice. So there's actually some new maps right now as well. It's not all all of what happening in the same square. That's a nice upgrade. One thing that seems a little interesting about this phase of the game is that the music doesn't really seem to fit the atmosphere in my opinion. Sadly, you can't get both. You're missing five. And Go, we might want to heal. heal up a little bit. Okay. Is this a boss or something? Um, it doesn't seem to do anything yet. Oh, whoa, 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 what the hell is going on? Oh what my god. Machine of entire life! Wow. Oh, I'm taking so much damage Remember, here. you can dodge roll. Okay, nice. Now we're in that weird math bonus mode. Oh, I think this is, the, this is what the boss did, okay. When he uses that ability, random turrets are spawning around. Hey. Oh, you're not doing well here. You're never safe. Oh, oh the worst dead! <laughs> <laughs> Wait for. Um, hopefully you'll be better than Liam and uh, play the game. Press F in the chat, guys. Press, Press F, F in the, the chat. chat. Okay, it's now time for the final verdict. The four solemn judges sit down for the last time to discuss who they think deserves the three thousand dollars the most. But that's not all. Each past challenger that was eliminated now returns as a judge. They form the fifth and final judge, and they will have the ultimate decision to decide who deserves to win the final prize. It's really difficult for me to compare them. Before I played them, I watched the trailers first, and when I was just watching the trailers, I thought, oh, it seems like Wishbone is the clear winner here. Like that trailer, like it's it's really good, and it almost makes me drool with how good his game looks, you know? like Wishbone really did a good job. Uh, I really like his trailer. Fluffy Potatoes, like didn't really show their real potential. Like I found the start of the trailer, the first, you know, five or 10 seconds. Yeah. I was like, well, what is this? And then it got good, then it got better anyway. Because usually it's way better if games like that start like right straight from the action, you see a lot, like a lot going on and the, the music was way too relaxing and way yeah. too chill for a game like that. It, it needed something that to make it everything even pop more. But then as I was playing them, I found myself really enjoying Fluffy Potatoes game. I think that he did a really good job of adding new levels, new enemy types, a cool new like math bonus level mode. I actually really like that he actually made a game. It's basically a product that you can open up and start playing right away. You don't need anything. You can just hop in, do a run and uh, be done with it. I, I just can't believe how how good he managed to polish everything up. I, I completely like lost track of time while playing that game. So yeah, I think that Wishbone did a really good job of incorporating points of interest into the map. It felt really well balanced where I would walk for a little bit and then I would find something really interesting, engaging or scary or dangerous. And there was a lot of stuff to engage with, which was cool. I really liked uh, how he even adjusted the atmosphere because uh, I think it got cool improved quite a lot. It's very interesting already yeah. and I agree with most of these points. Liam, what are your thoughts on the on the two games? Well, incredible atmosphere, really fun chilling. I heard it. All right, so I think now, guys, it's time to start announcing uh, who voted for who. Thomas, who do you vote for? <clears throat> who do you think should win okay. 3,000 USD uh, in this very first Blackthorn Proud competition? I'll be honest with you guys, I hadn't made up my mind until going into the judges' call and we could talk about different pros and cons and be able to kind of talk about our ideas a little more. One of the things that I valued very highly is the emotional pull and the marketability of the game, which is why I decided to cast my vote for Wishbone's game. Both of you guys really did an amazing job. I was actually in the same sailing boat as Thomas. I came to the to, to, to talk with other judges without uh, having like my final decision yet. Looking into what you actually managed to come up with and finish up in like only three weeks, the clear winner for me is uh, Fluffy Potato. Just Wishbone's game for me had incredible atmosphere. The, the Wendigo in the mist was just stunning and it's gonna haunt my dreams. So I, that's why I vote for Wishbone Games. 
Liam, but I'm going to talk for him because uh, his, his uh, audio is not the greatest here. He voted for Fluffy Potato because he's a very different player from me and he really just loves the arcade, fast-paced action, which makes to all, everybody just loved these games, uh, was blown away and super inspired. So thank goodness we've got the fifth and final judge, which is the past competitors. So now, guys, here comes the twist. We're going to announce the winner in, uh, in a few short moments, but... Instead of just one developer winning 3,000 US dollars, we're giving you guys the choice, if you want, to split the pot. Instead of just one winner earning 3,000, you guys can choose to win 1,500 each, guaranteed. What's going through your mind? Um, well, I mean, I actually came into this kind of expecting that you would win based on the presentation. I mean, I would be happy with splitting. Look, we pretty much put in the same amount of time. Maybe I did a little bit more because you were at work, but effort, passion, everything. I think we both deserve something for making it this far, um, so I'm happy to split. Wow, that was a, I didn't think the decision would come so easily. Mm -hmm. I'm inspired. I personally feel like I want to make a Steam game in three weeks as well now. Mm -hmm. Crazy stuff. Beautiful. Um, Okay, so 1,500 each, great, uh, but we're still going to announce who technically won, according to the judges here. They formed one unit, they also went in a meeting, and they came to a decision over who they think should win. Our vote, collectively, was for Fluffy Potato. <laughs> <laughs> Fluffy Potato wins the first Blackthorn Prod competition. Fluffy Potato, any words, has the, the, the champion, the current champion, undefeated champion of the Blackthorn Prod competition. Uh, well, uh, thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. I came in mostly looking to just have fun, make something cool. Everyone else's games looked awesome. It's true that just based on the trailer, Wishbone's game probably takes the lead here and uh, quite a few of the people from the community will likely just see that that's why we really recommend to all of you guys to play the games uh, explore them fully because these are really works of art let us know if you enjoyed this game making competition if you guys like this video we've got some far bigger ideas of where to take this series what to do next remember guys that's our brand new course of building collaboration with thomas brush the game of hero is only available for the next 30 days and there are only 300 spots available so hurry up if you want to grab a seat and take this crazy opportunity. All right, thanks so much for watching this video. We're gonna see you guys real soon. Make sure to subscribe, like, and stay tuned. Blackthumb Prod has just gotten started this year. Cheers. Cheers.